Left to its own devices, for every one person who gets COVID-19, three other people will become infected. Even with social distancing, to really get on top of this virus, we need to know who's been infected and then stop them from infecting others. In other words, test, track, trace. The one thing that we've known for months now from countries like Germany and South Korea is that contact tracing is absolutely pivotal for coming out of the lockdown. You might wonder then why, after nearly two months of being in the lockdown and as England begins to lift those restrictions, why this country doesn't have a functioning contact tracing system. I want to update the House on building our army of contact tracers. Today I can confirm that we have recruited over 21,000 contact tracers in England. Today the Health Secretary informed the House that he was making progress on hiring contact tracers. We now have the elements we need to roll out our national test and trace service. The testing capacity, the tracing capability and the technology. But that's not quite right. The government is still advertising for contact tracers and recruiting the numbers is very different to being ready to contact trace. The government now says that it's recruited 21,000 contact tracers and that a significant number are trained. So why then are we not contact tracing? Well, we put that to the Department of Health and they got back to us saying that they still need time to assure the resilience of our systems, finesse our processes and consolidate the training of contact tracers. Or in other words, when the government says that they're trained, they're actually still in training. We've had eight weeks to develop a better system. The entire point of lockdown and the way it's been used in Greece, in Austria, in Denmark, in Australia, in New Zealand, in you know, numerous countries, is you basically press pause at a very expensive price, at huge economic and social cost, to basically go after the virus. You aggressively try to figure out who has it, how do we break the chains of transmission, how do we put in place the infrastructure and the surveillance so that when we lift lockdown, we're in a better position than we were when we went into it. In Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, their contact tracing system also isn't up and running. There is currently no date as to when manual contact tracing will be in operation in the UK. The second type of contact tracing involves an app on your phone for which there are two options for governments to choose from, a centralised and decentralised system. The decentralised option is the one that most countries have gone for. In this system, your phone records who you've been close to. If you come down with the virus, your phone can then contact those people to warn them. The centralised option is similar up to the point of infection. When that happens, with your consent, your phone will contact a centralised hub, NHS X, which will in turn ping your contacts. The UK has gone for the centralised approach, but there's still a debate as to whether that's the right option, even in government. Dr Michael Veal helped to create the decentralised system. What I'm hearing is that there are uh, real technical challenges with the current app that might limit adoption. While initially it looked like many other countries would do a centralised system, uh, the uh, noise from civil society, academics, privacy campaigners, uh, but also epidemiologists around the adoption of these systems has led countries like Germany to flip to a decentralised system. And so the UK has now found itself in a surprise position that's surprised it, where it is actually alone in its strategy, nearly. The government has repeatedly said that it won't rule out changing direction. It's still not totally sure what the best solution is. So as England begins to relax restrictions, the app still isn't ready. The Department of Health says it will be rolled out in the coming weeks. And finally, testing. The government has increased capacity. Some days, they get close to testing 80,000 people. But it's not just about tests, it's about getting the results back quickly. It's something that medical advisor Jonathan Van Tam was asked about in today's Number 10 briefing. We need to do it bigger and faster, and as fast as we can. And we are sending a clear message as scientists that it needs to be fast. I started to feel like slightly unwell. Eloise Harrow, a primary teacher, got tested on the 2nd of May and then awaited her result. So yeah, and then heard nothing. And then on the following Friday evening, so nearly two weeks after the test, and the test was a Saturday morning, so I got it Friday evening, um, I had the unclear result. Eloise's is an extreme example. Most people will get their results more quickly than 13 days. The government claims once they get to the lab, 
95% of tests are processed within 48 hours. I could have been returning to work when actually I was at home wondering whether I had coronavirus or not. Test, track, trace is the future. It's how we restore liberty and rebuild our economy. But core to that is contact tracing, something that nationally we're simply not doing right now.